Hello and welcome to Garblag Games. We're playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Planescape, and this is the Dark of the Cage. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Dark of the Cage, the Garblag Games Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Planescape show. I'm Pete the Dungeon Master, and in a moment we'll go around and everyone will tell you who they are and who they're playing and the wonderful things that have happened to their character now that they've all leveled up to level three. Uh, you may notice that Sam is cutting I'm some totally cake it's and passing it. it around. <laughs> and that is because today is John's birthday. Yay! 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 Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Jim. I expect to roll many 20s. <laughs> yes. In fact, uh, well, not bad. 15 not bad. 15 is yeah. not bad. Not bad. Better than how I was rolling last week. <laughs> last week? Two weeks ago. Anyway. No, 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 no. Before we do... I've eaten lots today. Okay. Please don't forget to check out our social media links below. Check out our Discord as well. We In the month of June, we are doing uh, a randomly generated dungeon challenge in the Map Chat crew. I have done my first dungeon, and that is uh, available now on our Patreon. So please go and check that out as well, where you can get Grimdark our free dark fantasy role-playing game. And shortly, the map will be statted up as an adventure for the Grimdark system. So you can go and enjoy that as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, also, we have a Just Giving page for Diabetes UK. 10% of our Patreon money goes directly to Diabetes UK. It's a very worthwhile cause. It's close to our hearts. So please go and check that out. There's a link below. And also, I'd like to say thank you to our friends, sponsors, uh, the Thornless Roads. Yep. Um, and Hi, yes. Did you see the Thornless Roads little life screen? I saw, yes. It looked very cool. Very cool. It totally yeah. doesn't have druid stuff in for a reason. <laughs> very cool. I like the little life, uh, life hearts to do your oh. health. I yeah. thought that was quite cool. Little hit die thing. Yeah. Spell little spells. Spell slots. slots. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so you can see that on their Facebook page, and we've got a link for their website down below as well. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to announce. So, without further ado, he's very busy sta up in leveling up his character. No, I'm reading. Oh, you're reading I'm the reading. Okay. Reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're making some notes. How dare you read, sir? Listen, I'm not having nothing this is a place of like fun. So, <laughs> hello. His character even hello. Which, where, where's my camera? Where's my camera? Oh. Find, your you Find your light. Find your light. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I should have like a little dot that comes on when it's me. You mean like a laser? The blue, pointer. like the no, blue light. Blind me. I mean like the blue uh, light. Uh, the I'm Simon. I'm, oh yeah. I'm playing uh, Attila. Uh, I'm now level three, which means I'm officially a swashbuckler. Uh, it means I'm now a gun toning gun toting maniac. Hey. What's new? And, um, not that <laughs> and uh, I shall continue to perform barrel rolls over tables. Uh, other such one-handed <laughs> car wheels, <laughs> one-handed car wheels, um, and importantly, I no longer have to reload pistols because I'm a GIF. It's and you reach their like... level, and that means you just ignore the reload basically, on gunpowder weapons. Basically, I'm now wow. uber hard. That sounds Does that like include a useful thing? <laughs> Technically, <laughs> a gunpowder weapon. <laughs> I mean, you could have a hand cannon, couldn't you? You, you could hold the barrel of a cannon out of one. Yeah. and then light it yeah. with one hand if you had some kind of sling. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, the yeah, kickback the... could hit you in the. There you go. <laughs> so you could Maybe he's a grip, I would imagine he's quite robust. Sneak attack with a cannon. Sneak cool. Cannon. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. What's that hissing noise? It's not, <laughs> not sneaking for rain. I didn't expect rain today. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. I suppose it could be a fake cannon. Oh, the swallows are out again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Hi, I'm Leon, and <laughs> I'm playing Heskin, a uh, kobold bard, and I've joined a college now, as my bard is level three. I've joined the College of Doors, which is a special college made by uh, Garblad Games, available on their Patreon. For free on the Patreon, or do you have to sign up? For, for free. For free on the Patreon. It's a very early one. I may... I may you got a little bit excited. Refresh it and put it. No, it's like ages ago, so yeah. I may refresh it and add it to the free when content. When you went, we're going to do Planescape yeah. things! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah. Heskin's like learning more about uh, all of the magical of the planes, and he's seeing all his planar fellows just open doors. He's very curious about this and the musical influences across the planes. So he can start to use uh, his musical magic abilities to influence the planes and get like the, the chords and harmonies of each plane 
Mm-hmm. Sing us. Well. You can also disrupt those. Sing us the song of your people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to say, I was I was inspired by He Man and the Masters of the Universe movie to make that subclass. Cool. So all the all the ti- all the titles of the powers are oh, nice. things that Gwildor says. Oh wow! In He Man, I the Masters of the did Universe. not get that reference <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and I got He-Man. a new spell. Uh, I went for Heat Metal. I was trying to go for like sound based things, but then I think Hessen's quite enjoying his more comedic spells. <laughs> Okay. And the idea of heating up someone's armour while they're wearing it was too oh. good to pass up. You're a comedy duo, aren't you? We have a cunning plan. <laughs> oh god, oh god. Anyway. I'm Sam, I'm playing Echo, who's a t- tabaxi druid, and she is now officially a druid of the mountains. Yes. Uh, which gives me spider climb and spike growth. Cool. I'm Very cool. You could be spider man. Right? That's exactly why I was thinking you said it. Well, I could just be a giant spider if I wanted. So. Oh, Surely okay. with spider climb and spike growth, you'd be carnage. Yeah, that mm. sounds fun. Yeah. Not it's sure, not that, it's fun, not sure no, that's uh, chaotic good. No, no, it's not. A few yeah. equips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> quips. Is that your brother? Quaff. Quips. <laughs> <laughs> Quaff and quips. <laughs> anyway, well, after Sam we have... Hello, <laughs> my name is John, but today I will be Jophiel, paladin of Ilmaltir. Yeah, sorry, I'll stop that now. Um, so I took a sacred oath. I've now got the oath of devotion, which gives me some nifty things, um, including a sacred weapon. So I can Ooh. now, I have to activate it and I can add my charisma modifier to my javelins. I'm playing a ranged paladin, it's quite <laughs> yeah. fun. Um, as well as that, I got from that protection from evil and good and sanctuary. And then from my normal level up, I got command and thunderous smite, which Whoa. again is another 2d6 that damage. Fun. Thunderous smite. Um, because thunderous. I'm an. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got the normal things like turn the unholy and divine health, but Ooh. also because I'm an uh, Azamir, got radiant soul, which Ooh. means I can do grow wings for a minute. And then that also adds my level to my damage. Oh, God. So the javelins are thrown with the force of a mountain now. Cool. I have to power up before each time. <laughs> so I'll be sitting there just going, ah! Yeah. <laughs> then I'll just thunder crap people. Cool. Anyway. I can still bless you as well. Ah! Oh, power me! Oh, I also rolled really well my uh, health, so I've got 30 hit points. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Cool. <laughs> I rolled exceedingly badly on my hit points, and I have 16. <laughs> yeah, oh. so that sucks. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm playing Quaff, um, who is an... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> even over here! <laughs> <laughs> it's just the expression, like, Quaff. <laughs> That's how you have to say it. It's the mouth weird. as wide as possible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's because he's just a bird, you know, it that just kind sense. of... Mm. Cousin of Quip. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> and uh, Akura, 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 Akura. Um, Aracocra. Aracocra, like, playing, uh, who is a birdman. I'm a cleric. I've leveled up. I've taken um, only spiritual weapon as, as a next level spell. Because uh, I get some good um, uh, Tempest spells at the level. So I get Shatter and Gust of Wind. Nice. Oh. Simon, that's a gust of wind. Yep. Um, and uh, I'm currently on three hit points. Yes. That's two more than me. <laughs> and. No, but you you leveled up. I leveled up. Yeah, so you get more so you hit get points. The hit points you rolled, yeah. you get. Yeah. But you're, you're still obviously okay. down from your total. Yeah. I don't do the magic beam of light from above and you're like, ding, 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 ding. The world of Warcraft. Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Spell slots work the same way, so in the extra slots I gain, I now can cast. Yes, the extra stuff you gain becomes manifest within you. It also means you can cast all of your level 1 stuff at level 2, like healing. You can, remember, you can cast a level 1 spell at level 2 with a lot of spells. So I'm Which I really like about 5th edition, I like the fact they removed cure light wounds, cure moderate wounds, cure serious wounds, cure critical wounds, cure, 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 and just went, cure wounds, power it up. Okay, so... Does anyone have that? Yep. Yeah, I got stuff that's... So, last time in episode four, you guys arrived in the basement of the Hall of Records, which is the headquarters of the Fated in Sigil, uh, the city of Doors. Uh, The Fated are a faction that believe that you get what you take, 
um, and you should go out and make your own way in the world and forcibly take things from people if you have to, if you can do it in a nice way, that's fine. Um, you guys arrived with Grendon Alpha 4. Party <laughs> um, Into this uh, room, which you found out later on, had a sign on the door that said, The Secret History of Sigil. And in here you found a whole array of books, Start one. an emergency exit pack, which I think you took, didn't you? The emergency exit bundle on the wall. Uh, no, I don't think I did. Okay. You, you were still in the room when we all went off. Right? Well, no, you, he flew out. You flew so. out. Yeah. I think we, we know it's there. No, I, I took a book. You took a book? Yeah. Echo took a book. No, I didn't. You took a book. You saw a book. I saw a book. You didn't it take it. It looked very interesting. You didn't take I it. I made a mental note of it, and when they owe us gratitude for helping them, I will maybe mention it. Okay, rather than stealing stuff. Yeah. Because no one else did that. No. <laughs> yeah. Heskin only stole a book because the paladin didn't want him to steal a book. Yes. <laughs> so that's how society works. <laughs> while you were in there, Grendon Alpha 4 was transcribing something into a tome seemed that he was imparting knowledge that he gained somewhere else. And he has been telling you that he's been looking for portals and doorways and information about the, the world that Hriak, played by Roger, who can't be with us this evening, um, the world that he has come from, which is called Athas. Uh, and he seemed quite interested in that. He's been gathering information with other Modron, it seems. And he's returned here to catalogue some of the information. You then heard uh, shouting in the corridor outside. A and commotion. Indeed. It was very much a commotion. And there was sort of stop thief, we're cut, you know, chasing going on. And you figured out you could get out the door, went outside, and there was an elf called uh, Tariel, who it you was. spoke to. And after you revealed that you had arrived here with the Modron, his demeanour changed quite quickly. And he said, very well, come with us, help us. Uh, which surprised you. Shows what you get for telling the truth. Indeed. And as then uh, Quaff raced ahead, flying through the strange enclosing underground confines oh, of the basements. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. Swooped up a staircase and saw that some ninjas, or people dressed like in robes and stuff and cartwheeling, parkouring off the walls and things, uh, were fighting the, some of these guards of the Hall of Records. Uh, a battle ensued. All the guards were horribly murdered. brutalised and murdered. Uh, no, one of them was just squished straight off, wasn't he? Like, <laughs> by... No, the Earth Elemental squished him. Yeah. Sorry, that was. There was a, a Kenku who dashed a small statuette on the floor which summoned an Earth Elemental, uh, which obviously... The creature was trying to do that as a delaying tactic, to try to get away. Uh, Quaff and Kriak yeah. saw to that later on. Um, and then you all ganged up on the Earth Elemental. It nearly killed Attila. Yeah, took me down. Beat up Quaff. Hurt oh, he lots didn't of touch people. Me. No, oh, no, I, the I, other I, one did. Yeah, didn't. The other yeah, one yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, touched me did. quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there was a lot of beating <laughs> up uh, with slams and punches. Uh, but you slowly breaking it apart, the cobalt stabbing it I, with his rapier. I did. And... I did knock the. Uh, you did knock it over. On its you arse. did. You did. And as the dust settles from the destruction of this elemental, you all feel bolstered by your own display of prowess and your abilities, and you feel a certain more confidence in your skill. And some of you even have a, a broader awakening in your mind of your own capabilities. Um, as if small doorways have opened <gasps> in your mind. Very good. Um, and uh, Hriak looks a bit injured. You all look, you're all looking a bit injured. Very and Quaff, as you're further up at the corridor that was at the head of, mm -hmm. the, of the chamber, you hear uh, booted feet coming down the corridor uh, sort of choo, 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 um, moving towards you, mm -hmm. and as you kind of sort of dust yourself off, and the kind of the dust cloud of the Earth Elemental kind of falls away, 
uh, you can see down the corridor that a group of guards who are dressed very much like Tariel and the other guards dead. are coming. Uh, that are dead. Is there, is there one left to let them know what's going on? I can't remember. Yes. I think there was one. There's, there's, there's one, one, one left. Injured, but not yeah, dead. One, guy's one injured, but not yeah, dead. One guy's oh, Harry, wasn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. we named him Harry. We named him Harry. Uh, Harry the guard. Uh, Harry the household but, guard. Not um, <laughs> and... These guards are coming towards you, Quaff. The rest of you are kind of tidying yourself up. Echo has just healed Attila back to life. Um, he wasn't dead. He was dying. It's not how I yeah, dying. Him. Sorry. Back to full life. And, uh, oh, did she heal you back to full? Nice. No, as in no, awake and awake. Oh, as in... Yeah, yeah, oh, right. <laughs> not half dying. Not bleeding to death Not anymore. mostly dead. Um, <laughs> Slightly alive. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you're kind of gathering yourselves. You're hurt. Happens. You're injured. These creatures are lying on the floor around you. Uh, there are two drow. There was a uh, was it a hobgoblin or an orc? Oh, it's a hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. Yep. Yeah. Uh, lying there, and then there is the kenku that is uh, off up ahead. Um, the guards are moving towards you, mm-hmm. uh, and you guys now, as you're kind of or sorting this set, yeah, exactly. You can start to hear these footfalls coming down the corridor. What do you want to do? I uh, feel the um, blessing of my god Thor and realise that I may have some new magical powers and go to heal myself straight away <laughs> and just stand there, make a huge crack of thunder and go boom. Okay, cool. And this huge oh. tufts of fur just go Oh, sorry, uh, feathers just fly out, and I'm hopefully standing there all nice and bright and radiant. Okay, you're gonna roll two ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you oh, casting? Like you I'm casting Q wounds at second level, so <laughs> it's um, uh, 1d8 per level plus my spell casting modifier. So, um, my is it attack? What's no, this is this what's the modifier? Is it the attack bonus or is it just the wisdom modifier? It's your wisdom modifier. Okay, so it's plus three on. Eight and two, so thirteen points down. Takes me back to four. Lovely. There you go. So you do indeed. There is you kind of s- slam your trident into the ground. There's a crack of thunder, and your feathers <laughs> crack a doom. Yes, and you are resplendent once again. What are the rest of you doing in the room? Neat trick. While you hear these guards <laughs> coming. Say neat trick to Quay. I've probably seen him do it before. Yes. Because we have have fought many times. Yes. Making sure no one else is bleeding out that shouldn't be. There are some dead guards. I will search something. Who are you going to search? The closest thing to me. The closest thing to me. Get (laughs) off. That is, in fact, uh, (laughs) Echo. No, okay, so you're going to search one of the drow. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Right, so uh, make an investigation roll. This is not that you... I mean, if you had all the... (laughs) <laughs> well, so I was decided that now he's just going to roll all his dice and pick one <laughs> What's if you've got multiple d20s in there you'd just be like oh that one's a 15 it's a d20 imagine there. if he did that and they're all ones yeah, yeah that would be <laughs> no. yeah. he's just showing off his fancy cup what'd you get what'd 16 you get? In any investigation bonus uh, investigation no so obviously it's not hard to search a body depending on how uh, thorough you are, yeah. uh, you know, to get all of the things off of it. You know, you pull their boots off and all this kind of thing. But you realise you have pressing time, so you kind of search them quite uh, swiftly. I have perception on this. <clears throat> it's fine. That roll is good enough. So you go through their kit and equipment. There is a short sword. Mm-hmm. There is dark clothing. Um <clears throat> There is a um, inner pouch on the on the on the belt. There are. Let me get some dice. Where am I? Up there. Where are my dice? Thirteen tarantulas. Uh, Each a drow, aren't they? Fifty silver One pieces in a, in a pouch. And in the pouch, when you kind of pull it out open, you see inside that there is a single die in there, like a six-sided die. Oh god, they're role players. Yeah. There's also a twenty sided die, a twelve sided die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start writing this There's a whole polyhedral set. No, no, no. no. There's just a, a there is a there is a yeah. There is a six sided die. Tray. <laughs> no, no, there's not a dice okay. dice rolling tray, unfortunately. There is a cup. 
Um, and uh, there are some daggers around the body, and you find four daggers on the body. Um, but it seems that that is pretty much all that it has on it. <clears throat> but that's all you'll get to do before the guards enter the room. Where's um, our little robot friend? I can never remember the name. He had just come to the top of the stairs. Grendon Alpha 4. Grendon he just Alpha come to the top of the stairs and said, Do you need any assistance? And you'd all gone no. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he's walking forwards uh, towards uh, Heskin. Um, I'm going to walk towards... Okay. Or him or the guards. The robots. So oh. you're going back into the room? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're kind of gathering the room and uh, Grindon Alpha 4 comes over to Heskin. Are you okay? Your biological integrity is high? Uh, it's not as high as it could be. But I think we're doing okay. <laughs> if you had to rate it out of 23. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I would not want to see it reach zero. <laughs> Did you finish all your work down in the library? I transcribed the information I had gathered. Uh, I will now report into Ramanda to uh, acquire my next set of goals, for which I was hoping, now that one through three are gone, I would have some assistance. Kind of looks at you with a strange, like, almost <laughs> wink on his face. Like he's trying to do a... Uh, a natural or expression, do an expression. That's, yeah, an expression yep. that a person would do. And he's like, like, he's so failing to smile. Ex <laughs> yes, exactly. He's like failing abysmally. Uh, Quaff comes over. The rest of you are kind of picking yourselves up or saying a word for the fallen and that kind of thing. <clears throat> <laughs> you seem to be unhurt, Avian. So I, I can heal myself. I was hurt rather badly. Is anyone else injured? I say to everyone. <laughs> Attila's lying on the floor. Uh, lying on the floor half injured like robbing a drow. <laughs> Just like, that's, that's kind uh, of I, I kind of point over to him while, while looking at... Uh, I don't remember the name. Grendon Alpha 4. Just yeah. like, I think he's pretty injured. I'll walk over to the... Um, is it Griff or Gif? Gif. Gif. Gif, as in the w moving Griff picture. Griff is your yes. Dark Heresy character. Griff is yes. my Dark Heresy yes. Just remember Gif. Ah, yes. <laughs> it's not going to help. It's a Gif. Um, <laughs> and I'll extend my hand. <laughs> and I'll heal him. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Does yes. Joe Field make that noise? <laughs> yes, she does. Yeah. You heal um, my Paladin level times five, which is 15. Well, you have that in healing points. You can dish out as you want. You can store a total number of hit points equal to your paladin level times five. Lay on hands. Yeah. And then throughout the day, you can go, boop, five for you, boop, five for you, boop, right. five for you. Um, I'll give him five then. Why not? I've now got this image of Jeffrey right now. Yeah. <laughs> Roll <Rough> 13. <laughs> uh, yeah, have 13. <laughs> if, if, if you had to rate it. Yeah. If you had to rate it out of 15, <laughs> how hurt do you feel? How about a 13? How about a 13? <laughs> yeah. Matter! Exactly 13. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's some healing going on. Kriak is robbing bodies in a very efficient manner. And these guards enter the room. And there are... Do you um, notice him robbing bodies? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Do I notice him robbing uh, I'm too busy get, doing it. Let me make a uh, stealth roll. I'm not very perceptive. I rolled a 13 for my perception. Uh, no, you don't notice it. Fair enough. No. You're I rolled busy. a 16 and he's got... I do notice and, and I don't care. He's <laughs> plus three, so he's <laughs> got... Spoiling. He rolled a 22. No, but that's 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 what the Akura Akura... Uh, I like. They, they don't have uh... arrow colour. <laughs> they don't care about possessions. Yeah, they, they don't care about. Well, they ah! care about possessions if someone like has it. But if it's just laying around, then they'll just take yeah. it. Very much, yeah. I am three years old. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. But very wise for your age, I find. You grow up fast. Eight guards enter the room, yeah. and sort of fan out from the doorway. Thunder wave. No. <laughs> thunder, 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 thunder. And a uh, uh, an elderly man. Uh, oh, not a guard. Let me get this right. Oh, we have a it's a person. Funky books. We apprehended these thieves on the guidance of these poor slain guards, including what's his face? I can't remember his name. Tariel. Tariel. Mm. 
Um, okay. We don't know what they stole, no, but we stopped them. We stopped them. Our yes. friend Harry, a human, a human male, uh, is bedecked in wizard robes uh, that <laughs> seem wizard. to be uh, very uh, well steeped in kind of iconography, symbols, runes of power, that kind of thing. In the left hand is a staff with a cruel, twisted black hand on top, within which is a kind of sickly, yellowy green crystal, in sort of in its clasp. It's carved. It's not a real. It's not a hand, but it's carved into a hand to hold this kind of crystal. I want to paint this miniature. And comes in with a bowed back and sort of a, a, a peaked hat, leaning forward. Not a wide-brimmed one, just like. One of those kind of sock hat things, you know, with kind of the bits down the sides. Hmm. It's got a thin, wispy beard coming off the end, and he seems to be partially sighted. Although, you're not sure. Everyone make... Um, what's the word? What's the right word? Rolls. Perception. Perception. Intuition. Uh, insight. Sorry. Oh, I'm good at insight. Insight. 13. Uh, I'm not even going to bother rolling. 7. <laughs> What did Lower you get? than a seven. Heskin has never uh, seen Eight. That's higher than a seven. Heskin's looking at going, oh, it's some sort of sock hat. What's the name? <laughs> sock hat? That can't be right. But I'm very good at insight. Thirteen. Did very bad. Thirteen. Mm. Okay. Um, you can tell under this uh, veneer of frailty, there is a sharpness mm. to his eye. And he comes in and the guards kind of fan out around and he looks around you all. So, who the fuck are you then? <laughs> oh. I just said that when you were describing your character. I said we uh, we we apprehended these thieves who stole something, but you, we chased. You're not them answering on, my question. On the behalf who are of you? your guard, I'm Quaff. Sorry, Quaff. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jophiel, paladin of Ilmaltir, and uh... sorry, what? <laughs> that just throws her completely. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Carry on if you must. Um, we came here with our Modron friend after escaping an attack. Oh, Alpha Redlock. Four! What are you doing? I don't like this man. He's Grendan not... Alpha Four says, "Ah, Romanda, I have completed my task. One through three are at zero integrity." Oh fuck! <laughs> what is it with these Modrons keep falling apart? We assisted Alpha Grendan Four to get here. <laughs> well, actually, I who think... the fuck are you? I am Heskin Longstaff. I don't like this man. Silver tongue. <laughs> am I? Does that supposed to? <laughs> <laughs> we are but weary travellers. Make a I don't know how uh, a comedy <laughs> role. Intimidation Make a performance <laughs> role to see if you like impress him with your yeah. Oh, 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 one. Natural oh, one. No. Oh. I fucking hate kobolds. <laughs> I shall step in front of the kobold and say. You haven't got enough men to be that much of a twat. <laughs> okay. He stabs his staff on the floor. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. <gasps> oh, he's psychically attacking uh, you. I pass. What did you roll? 16. 16. Do you have a modifier? Hey, do I need a modifier? Uh, you do, because he's... Super spells. He's an NPC. He is an I like we, may, well. we may have to start a level wizard. <laughs> <laughs> you are held. I'm held. You are held. You cannot move. Is that what? Is that what you can speak. Mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can talk, but you can't move. Yeah. And you're aware of this, but you're not sure if your friends are yet. Okay. And he's like, remember who you're talking to. I am Ramanda. Don't fuck with me. Now, what are you all doing in the basement here? How did so, you get in here? He's so getting fucking shot. <laughs> As I said, our Modron friend uh, used a emergency exit to get us here. Is this true? Are you wasting resources on these paladins? How far away is he? I'm not a paladin, I say to He's you. like 50 feet away from you. I don't like it. Oh, oh, he's at the very entrance of the thing, and oh, you are where you're finding me. You go spell that part. Yeah, he's, he's quite powerful. You, he seemed to use his staff. I think it's important you try and cheat him. OC. <laughs> it's so important I try and I see. Oh, yeah. oh. But OC, you should, you should definitely do Listen, it. Listen, and you can see he's he's wearing a badge of the Fated, so he is a member of their faction. He's not just some random 
wizard wandering Brandon around. Brandon Mook. <laughs> wandering like around. Us. Brandon, 18th um, level wizard. Right. So, you helped Don't Alpha 4 here. I'm Did held. Don't look at me. Look at look at some other fucking He's trying to get your attention. That's what? He's looking around. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that Elf, um, Alpha 4... I will see 4... If, I, if I actually notice how rude he's being, because I might not... Nope. Okay. And so I just explained. Uh, I, I, I believe. Also, now he's told you who he is. The three of you mm. can make uh, more insight um, rolls. <laughs> no, is it history? He could be history. It's like a knowledge of sigil kind of role. Uh, yeah, history is probably. Yeah. I just right what I, roll. I didn't roll very well, so uh, I only rolled a seven. Well, history would be sixteen. Insight would be eighteen. Okay. No. Uh, quaff. You don't think he's being rude, and he shouldn't be, because he's Romander the Wise, who is master of portals in Sigil. And and do I respect this person? Oh. You know that people uh, respect him because they have no choice. Portals are kind of a thing. And he's in charge of them. <laughs> All right. Well, I, do, I, I don't notice things, but I do get intimidated. So I, okay. so I change my tone, okay. and so I use more respectful language. Okay. So how, how would one address such a wizard... Would I know? Well, he's called the Wise, so you might call him Wise One or something along those lines. Or Master of Portals. Okay, then, so I say, uh, Master of Portals, we were brought here... Finally! Um, uh, by Grendon Alpha 4, after assisting Grendon Alpha 4 in its, in its mission. <laughs> I'd rather think Alpha 4 assisted us, if anything. Just a, it's just like that may be, but I'll try and try and give you a look in bird language. But can I kick him? Oh. <laughs> I assume he must have been somewhere near you lot. Well, he was in the astral plane looking for the horn of calling, and all these portals that keep popping up. Yeah, uh, I can't remember what happened in the plane. Was <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Don't worry. You, don't, you, he, yeah. so he, he fell out of ship. Pointing at it you. was very awkward. He came for, through an astral conduit. Yeah, uh, can, I I'll, I'll, I'll turn to Grenadine Alpha before I said, "Could you please explain?" <laughs> To the wife. Imagine if he just went, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Alpha 1 through 4 were sent on a reconnaissance mission to investigate Athasian portals and rumours of the failure of our faction members to secure the Horn of Calling. We were captured and I was in, in the bowels of the ship with that kobold <laughs> and the gif. Then a wave at the Yeah. It's yeah, like, oh. like the old wizard guy's like fine tagalongs and wastrels. Very well. Well maybe you can be useful. <sighs> we're uh, we're in need I'm in need of some bodies, some people to go and talk to a contact. I'm just gonna kinda of look around the room <laughs> and then you know carry on paying attention but not not these idiots he says waving his hands at the guards not these trained monkeys <laughs> i need people with a bit of backbone which it looks like some of you he says looking at the gif might actually have it if you help alpha four so far or he's helped you i'm not sure which way around it sounds like he got you out of a bit of a pickle if you used an emergency exit we well, tell, we, tell them not to use them unless it's dire. Well, we were being rounded up by the um, new faction. We, oh, I forget who we've been. The Harmonium. Part of the Harmonium. They're part of the uh, yeah, like uh who were getting rid of the ill people who had taken portals to uh, Sigil. The in-depth. The sick people that are arriving. Yes, yes. The Harmonium... Yeah, I heard they made the move. Yeah, they well, they were going to make their move. They're they're gathering the. That's going on now. That's why we're here. We arrived approximately three sessions. Fucking ago. bastards! <laughs> these harmonium and these mercy killers—they're making their move already. Oh, I thought we'd have more time. I thought we'd better find it. Hmm. Right, right. Find what? I don't know because I don't. Know. Oh, the dark shard. Yeah, uh, don't worry. It's way beyond your comprehension. The dark you crystal. I wouldn't <laughs> understand. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Wait, you're a Skixies. Ah! <laughs> something came through from Athas. There's something in the city that people he... are after. Didn't he come through from Athas? Kriak is like deliberately trying <laughs> not to make himself. <laughs> he see came because through from Athas. You don't know this, but Kriak comes from a land that's ruled by a sorcerer king, and this guy kind of reminds him a bit of that. So he's trying to keep a low profile in the background. 
until I point him out and yeah. say, oh, he's from good. Athas. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of people in the city from Athas now. We have several that we're talking to. Um, he keeps looking occasionally at Heskin, like there's a strange... Oh, God, he's the dark shard. This, this <laughs> thing... No, um, he just cracked himself. <laughs> this thing is affecting people. Those who believe in freedom are being psionically inf impacted, inflicted with some strange malady. So that's what's making them sick. But they can be cured, right? When they, they go can to, be. Yeah. yeah. When they leave the radi radiance of this effect in the city, then they can be cured. But once they return, then they are afflicted again. So we could pinpoint their centre location by taking sick people. Which is what they've done. Which is maybe what they've done. Maybe they're trying to figure out where the location is. They're clever is. bastards, aren't they? Yeah. I think the mercy killers of this fucking shard. And the harmoniums want, harmonium wants to get a hand on it as well. So if we infiltrate them, we could figure out what they're doing. Good luck doing that. We can infiltrate kill them. them. <laughs> we should... Well, I it's not for me to say what we should and shouldn't do. But... Speak up, Paladin. You often I'm... talk before thinking. Why not follow on that practice? <laughs> uh, I will do whatever needs to be done to stop this man. Oh, will you? Oh, that's very good of you. <laughs> yes, How I about will. we try and sort the fucking city out? Uh, that's the plan. Um... My lord does he not believe a in small any goblet of wine. <laughs> 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 he was holding it all along. Mm. Um, my and lord, Jophiel will... has a cylindrical metal flask of ale. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll turn to the other guards and kind of like, and then look around at them. They look and look, they at look their like crushed. I friends. am fucking used to this shit. And it's <laughs> yeah, but look me at their insane. crushed and dead friends and they're, say they're not moving. They're they're yeah. staying probably there. trained to. Do you want to clear them. them away? They'll do what I tell them to do. Mm. <laughs> um, you clear them away. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guards goes, looks at you like you fucking, <laughs> <laughs> like eyeballing you all the way over to the fucking to the people. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, um, I, I, I go over and place my hand place my hand on me and cast guidance he's digging through the stone <laughs> hole does, does, does he not just like open a door and just shuffle them all in and close it there is a door to one side <laughs> and in fact he does like, he pulls out yeah. a broom yeah, yeah. yes yeah, so there's a very wide thick bristled broom um, <laughs> he he waves his hand and mutters a few words and uh, anyone can make a, a no, who's got Arcana? Do, if you have Arcana, you can make a roll. I have detect so I magic. Do it. A half. Yes, so I don't have Arcana. Though. So am I still held yeah. while he does something else? Uh, you're held for... A minute, isn't it? Yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, for a, a little while. I have a rule book. Thank you. So, and I in have half my modifier, I got 17. He's casting detect magic, or some something... Similar from okay. your experience. Well, I actually have <laughs> detect magic, so would I just would I notice that anyway? Considering I have detect magic, you have the spell have detect the spell magic, detect. but you need to cast it in order yeah, okay. to detect that. All right. So unfortunately not. But you, I mean, you can all see him do something, but okay. you go like he's detecting. I think he's detecting, detecting magic. <laughs> I think he's casting the level one spell. To detect magic. <laughs> he's uh, been looking for magical as influences told in the, in the ancient facility. books. <laughs> And if... lo, thou can cast a level ah, one spell. You can spell. make another wisdom saving throw. What do I need? Two. So, <laughs> let me just... Well, I've, already, I've already rolled 16 and not passed, so... 240. Uh, one second. Yeah, Are you not meant to tell him that? <laughs> oh. You're not meant to tell him that? <laughs> He's not going to cheat. He's the DM. Oh, I see what you mean. Now. What did you roll? Seventeen. Uh, do you have any modifier to no. that? No. Okay, failed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You just got the book. What, what, what did I, you roll? What do I need? failed? You don't even look at the book. <laughs> what do I need to roll? Eighteen. You need to roll a nineteen. Nineteen. Fine. That's fine. As yes. long as I know what number I need. Yeah, then I can roll it. Yes. Yeah. Then he just goes nineteen. Yes. Um, <laughs> Does it work? Try and stop it. Uh, <laughs> think, think you're fine. That's exactly how it works. The I know it is with you, Simon. Um, the, the, he says very well. He's going to leave the room before you're <laughs> It seems it seems that you are useful, and I'd be willing to pay you some money 
to go and meet a contact of mine with Grendon Alpha 4, escort my Modron scout to meet with a contact at the Fortune's Wheel in the Ladies' Ward to discuss other locations for portals that could get you to the Astral Plane. The job needs to be finished to find this Horn of Calling and our fallen comrades. And she may know more about where the Dark Shard might be. Um, I mean, we will accept this, this task um, purely to stop the suffering within the city. I think we good, can all agree. Good, good, good. Hang can on. we have another emergency portal? <laughs> nope. Do you know anything about the Rod of Seven Parts? <laughs> Subtlety. I know where three of them are. Oh, could you tell me? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> says, I'll come back later. <laughs> um, I know, well, a, cor- I, a correction. I own the portals that could take you to some locations where three of them have been reported to be residing. There will be people who would stop you from taking them. Oh, I understand that. And that is of your own... You had a before, we, um, before we set off to see this contact, um, some of my companions are heavily wounded and have been fighting for quite a long time, so we need some place to rest and recuperate before setting off. Well, very well. There's an entire facility above us that you can take. I'm sure Duke... the Duke won't mind... Uh, if you're under my auspices and uh, behaving yourselves, um, I promise we. <laughs> look at you. I promise and he, we. And will he behave stops concentrating Does on he? the spell, so you're not held. I'm not held. Anymore. Are you going to shoot now? I'm willing to pay you all, and to give you an opportunity to head to the astral plane to find this magical item and get quite a bit of goodwill from the fated. Well, whichever faction or people you work for, I don't really care. However, we believe in seizing our own fortune, and if you can do this, then maybe one day you might even call yourselves fated. Okay. Apart from you. <laughs> I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, that uh, no, no, no. We them? won't let you in. It's not that you don't want to be one of us. We won't let you in. Right. Okie dokie. <laughs> Well, thank you. He seems slightly senile. Do uh, do, do clerics of of Thor join the fated? I mean, do oh, they... we've got loads of Thor clerics. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think absolutely. Like women. Oh well, we have a link to the, the land of the, I shall the Norse gods. Slowly towards him whilst he's distracted talking to someone else. He clicks his fingers, and a couple of guards move towards you and say, "I don't think that's a very good idea, mate." <laughs> Is that what they say? That's what they say. <laughs> yep. oh, but in so unison. Nice. In unison. Like, <laughs> echo. Not, not that echo. <laughs> One arm's called Tweedledee. The other one's called Tweedledup. Um, yeah, all right. What are you doing? Um, asking him about, uh, instead of being paid, can I know where the three parts of the rod of seven parts are, please? Well, I was going to pay you 200 gold pieces each. And two emergency portals. What? You just said that. I like your style. <laughs> he's going to make a make a, persu- a deception roll, and deception? he's going to make a, a wisdom save. Was that a, was that a lie? <laughs> was he lying? He's, like, that is guy's bullshit. Mad, so he's bullshitting him. Uh, With six, advantage because it's re- it was oh. re- you did that really well. I couldn't even. T- I thought he was being 16. genuine. <laughs> I rolled a two. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, of course. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were being absolutely genuine. I, I thought I missed he something. He kind of waves his hand at one of the guards and he's like, go fetch two of those things. Uh, I think you should give him an inspiration. Off, yeah, have an inspiration. <laughs> oh, it's genius. He's like, yep, pat you on the shoulder. <laughs> have a D6 inspiration dice. Yeah, I've, got these go- I've now got these gold and amber Ooh. dice to hand out for... GM inspiration. I do a D6 to add on rather than another D20 for advantage. Because um, you can get advantage pretty easily. Pretty easily. So it's not, you know. I shall, I shall um, Shoot. push past both on. the guards. I won't actually push past them. I will merely go to push past okay. them. Okay. And I will pickpocket one of them um, whilst I'm doing it. 
I'm going to use my deception. I love the hippo pit to... <laughs> <laughs> Your fingers <laughs> are so <laughs> large. <laughs> 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 use my deception to get ability to like bump it. Okay, cool. Okay, so then we roll. Okay, okay. Uh, you re-roll. See if he. See if he. Um... <laughs> I would be so intimidated that he wouldn't say anything. I rolled a three. <laughs> I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay because I get plus six. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I pickboxed the guy because he didn't realise that. Um, okay. That's you, what did, I was doing. you like just pickboxed so you just his like helmet. grabbed his. <laughs> 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 he turns around and his breastplate's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. did you go for his left pouch or his right pouch? Bat? Maybe. <laughs> well, no, you, you can notice that. You can, like, Do you pouch. notice? Okay. That's okay. the question. Yes. Okay, it's left. No. Yeah. And you just pop it in your pocket. You yeah, don't yeah, even know what's in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And then I shall step... step I tactfully took a minus on my wisdom so I couldn't see things, so I could avoid that. So I'll bump through them. Okay. Just to just to kind of... The Ramanda says... Step Gif. Gif. Where's your crew? Where's your ship? They're all dead. What are you doing on land? Well, I I, um, I, I leapt aboard the ship that destroyed my ship. That would um, be to, uh, So this the ship that them all. Grendon Alpha 4 was on? Yes, and then I um, killed lots of people. Uh, took what? Refuge, and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, you not, do you not realise that's what they, I did? They, no! <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you've not read my backstory. <laughs> the, the crew, the, no, the I other didn't ship, know it was in print. No, but the other ship was crewed by the Hobgoblins <laughs> under Brockla. Like, who I you fought. I'm writing it down. <laughs> yeah, they I remember slavers. doing... They were slavers. Brockla and he one other He killed of the slavers. So I didn't realise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He never told me. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. He basically fired a great big cannon into their deck, yeah. maybe destroying their ship. In and you veered... Into but what about, yeah, yeah, yeah. what about all the other slaves? They saved a bunch of them. Yeah, I saved like loads. Oh, well, going to have to make a, a yeah. harsh call on which ones oh, to save. Yeah. But some of them survived the anyway. No, that's episode the one. Elflings. Shipwreck on the Outlands. And the, and the children. So, there was a bunch of he kids. says... I know, I, I gave the children to an orphanage. So he says... <laughs> you took them seems... to an orphanage. You didn't give them to an orphanage. Well... <laughs> <laughs> it seems without your assistance, none of the information will be returned by Grendon Alpha 4. So I have you to thank. And um, he kind of pulls his cloak open. Whoa! It's actually his dressing gown, and he's not wearing anything under the... No, uh, and he's ah! kind of like watches and other throws. And... Happy birthday. <laughs> it's just like Kiff, it's jovial, just with internal screaming in subtitles. He throws to you... To whom? A... Um, a sock puppet. A, a cloak. He says, here, a trinket for you. I found it in one of the storerooms. Take that. Thank you for your I wiped my ass with it. <laughs> Is it slow fall? <laughs> oh, that would be... I shall, I shall say, catch that if I don't. Just to the guy in front of me. What does he say? Catch that. If I don't, okay. then I should try and catch it. Okay, well, you catch it. It's okay. not hard. Uh, you have this. A cloak of incineration. Uh... <laughs> a cloak of... Oh, I'm not going to say that. That's a very bad joke. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry, everyone. <laughs> so, he throws the cloak to uh, uh, the gif, and he grabs it and, and tucks it away. Um, I mean, that's just such a small, minor magic item that I'm not oh, even going to make you roll to identify it. It's a... <laughs> cloak of many colours? No. <laughs> You'll find out. At some point. I'm sure we will in about 20 um, minutes. There's a certain <laughs> quote well. I can't get out of my and, mind uh, I can't say on camera. <sighs> you have seen Conan? 200 gold pieces each. Yes. Too long ago. Yeah. The film. Yeah. There's a joke in that. that the old one, one or the new one? The old one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gonna stop. Right. You fuckers then. There's the, the, the fortune's wheel. Every night, Shemeshka dines there. The three uh, planar, planars. Yes. Uh, you guys roll hmm. to see if you recognise that name. Excellent. I rolled a twenty. She dines there every evening. She is a wealth of information. You rolled a what? Twenty-one. Okay. She is known as the spy master and the king of spies Ooh. within Sigil, and she is an uh, a, an Arcanolath. Uh, which is a jackal-headed, fiendish creature, 
um, who um, <laughs> her name is Shemeshka. Shemeshka. Uh, and she is known throughout the city. And the the work the 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 dark is that she could destroy any faction if she so chose. But she likes to manoeuvre them all against each other and share key information to people at certain times. To you, this sounds like the perfect timing for her to be involved. You're almost anticipating that it would be her name that would come up. Cool. Why would she help us? She helps me. Right. How will she know that we're working for you? He points at the Modron. Uh, Alpha 4 can prove this. And if you are so friendly with my mechanical friend there... Not that friendly. I would say we're friends. Then perhaps you will help him survive his trials and tribulations. He has more information to gather from me. What do you mean? Where are these portals concentrated? What is the power of the Horn of Calling? Why is there fascination with the astral conduits? All of these things. He has them in his... What do you call them? What do you call them? Data files. Yes, very well. Um, however, I would warn you, probably you most, that she is not to be trifled with. She is extremely dangerous, and uh, nearly as dangerous as me. We will be very courteous, won't we? <laughs> um, I don't think she cares about courtesy. She cares more about wit cunning and a strange respect but maybe not manners I don't understand I was going to say maybe you should do the talking (laughs) (laughs) Um, thank you every now and then his eye is drawn back to you we will head upstairs and rest before we continue our mission Yes. before you go I would talk with your kobold friend Okay. Do you need us to stay? I prefer you didn't, actually. Okay. Good. Now, one of the guards can take you to the private quarters. You will be fed and watered and pampered and brushed, whatever it is you do. <laughs> uh, scrubbed, wallowed, <laughs> mudded. I don't know. You go and do whatever it is you gift to. Yeah, scrubbed. <laughs> Plucked. Um, anyway, just fifteen what? beautiful what? women with those massive brushes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dust so just shooting off. Very well. Now, fuck off. He kind of moves to the side and kind of, just kind of, just kind of beckons you over. What the rest, are you, are you well, going? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going okay. outside as far as. Okay, so you're going to go out I'm into the fly to the ground. Roof. I yeah. shall say to Heskin, "You'll be fine if he does anything." Eventually, I'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he Maybe. laughs. He laughs. He's like, <laughs> I like, I like you. I like you. You can could is, serve. What a, a weird world we live in when the, mm. the nice, polite people are looked down upon for the uh, murderers. Heskin does not doubt at all. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the game, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's. Oh god. No, I, oh no, existential oh, crisis. No. <laughs> oh no, no. What are we doing? What is the What is the world? Anyway, what's happening? Let's not branch I'm out into real world politics. Going. Quickly, oh, drink more alcohol. Sigil politics. Echo, what are you doing? I'm leaving. Yeah. And making sure that Hayat's coming too. Now, did I have the Hall of Records on here? I thought I. I'm going outside so I can read my book. <laughs> Nobody knows I stole. No, I don't have the don't Hall of Records. Stop saying on it then. <laughs> <laughs> the ho- in character. <laughs> <laughs> the Hall of Records. It looks like this. The main building. Cool. I'll put an image over the the screen later. There is a large main structure. Oh, it reminds me of... Uh... And there is a kind of training ground in front of it. And there is actually four sigil, very green grounds. Hmm. Echo, when you get up to the ground surface, you are actually pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Quaff, there are trees here, Yeah, uh, you know, that you could perch in. Uh, oh, not, no, I'm, I'm not g- making fun of you. But no, I would go to the, top, go of the, to the top of the tower and perch yeah, there. The there are guards there who are keeping an eye on you, but they <laughs> recognise you as an Aaron Cocker and they're just like, don't disturb anything, just stay there and that's that's fine. Don't shit on them. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do a big crap on the... On, yeah. So <laughs> the Hall of Records is this friend. tall tower in the centre. Off to one side, there is the Rowan Academy of Training, which is named after uh, the Duke. 
who is the head of the of the faction. There is the faction hall where all the meetings go on, uh, and then there are kind of the property records, the census records, the dormitory, and you guys are led off towards the dormitory, um, where you are given a uh, bed and board and food and enough space to rest, etc. Teskin. The this strange as you get closer to this man, he has a stench of dry sweat on him. He clearly does not care for his personal kind of um, aroma. Uh, he doesn't care what people think about him. And as you approach, you can see his kind of unsightly spots and warts on his face that seem to be seeping slightly. And he is very uh, bent over. But as he moves, there is a strength to his body that kind of belies this external uh, visage. King Boomy. He looks at you. Mm. You you have the eyes, don't you? What do you mean? You can see them, can't you? He pulls out from a, a, a bag on his side, which seems to pull out a much bigger thing than can fit inside the bag, uh, an emergency exit. And he throws it on the wall. You know this is a one-use portal. It's like a very callous use of such resources and magic and he throws it against the wall and as he does your perception changes slightly and you can tell very strongly i mean you know it's a portal because you know what's about to happen mm. but you can feel that it's a portal and there is a tone and a music and a resonance going on as it fires up and beyond you can see the icy chambers of the hub um, and uh, you feel like there is a, a strange, echoing, melancholic music coming from that realm towards you. That you can feel as a, like a thread coming through the portal. Not, not quite that. <laughs> or Far Among the Stars. Ah. Uh, and, um, not John Williams. <laughs> yeah. um, and this is a new thing for you. You kind of feel this kind of uh, this music of the, of the planes. Mm. Not the spheres. Uh, and uh, you're like, you are slightly taken aback yourself. Um, and he kind of looks at you. He says, Your kind are few and far between, my friend. I, I would be very keen for you to enter my employ on a permanent basis. Oh. Once you return, I'll have a contract signed up and there will be a handsome reward for you for every portal you find. Nice. Grand. Probably help if I had another one of these on the mission. Probably I've given conscious. you one already, haven't I? I don't think so. Make another deception. I already gave him two. Seven, no, 18. What? Okay. He, um, he says, Ah. <laughs> you are, you are, oh, I know your type. <laughs> Why does Excellent. this guy like, I like really? It. Uh, I like it. Excellent. Mm, here now. It's just the way the world is. I will give you this. It's not. It's, it's but a mere trinket. Else got magic items. <laughs> uh, it is but a mere trinket, but it may be of use to you. Sorry, you'll get more. Um, near and he um, passes you a metallic headband. Um, uh, from another pocket within his voluminous robes and he hands it to you and he said this uh, if you come across the dark shard put it on <laughs> 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 this will um, this will guard your thoughts okay that's very really useful yes uh, thank you very much you're welcome what can I say except you're welcome Right. So he then says, Haskin probably is yeah. um, Okay, so you all go and uh, give him room and board. And some very fine food is brought. His guardian uh, deer uh, steak, uh, what's the word? Veal. Veal is brought. And you are fed and you have very fine wine. They give you great food and drink. It's amazing. This is like the Duke's household. 
the, the Duke's faction, okay. and in the faction dormitory, okay. and in there, there are loads of like Viking style warriors, all with horned helmets, and they're like, Wah! slapping each other on the back. There are a few uh, fur bulk passing through, there are a couple of giants in there. This, this, the, the main kind of common room of the tavern, as it were, the bar in the dormitory, is a huge room for large people. Uh, and they're all moving around. You feel small for the first time in a little while. You know, and there's like a fire giant, like, clapping someone on the back, and flame ripples up his arm, and he's like, whoa, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, and there's, um, over to one side, you see an Etin, who's having real trouble playing some sort of primitive chess against um, three identical elfin, very thin ears, kind of looking figures, sitting the other side of the of the board um and there's all manner of people moving about it's very it's guardian very norse ve that kind of feel so it's kind of like um you know rohirrim there's kind of wood carving everywhere there's lots of horse iconography all that kind of stuff and people are having a merry time and all this kind of stuff a lot of them seem to be talking about heading back to isgard to have a bloody good battle tomorrow you know i might die but i'll see you on sunday for another fight kind of thing you know they're they're all quite jovial uh, so you kind of come into this area and people are moving around but you are at the end of what for you has been uh, an interesting period though not a long amount of time it's been sort of a couple of a few hours since you last kind of woke up but you are absolutely shattered and knackered there traveling through portals fighting twice you know you're like just exhausted so if you wish to you may take a long rest Indeed. I rest. shall retrieve some food and drink and probably go and sit outside where there's less noise and people. Okay. Okay. Um, you head outside. And uh, there's a white book. There we go. I love these Planescape books. They're so good. There's a lot of them I noticed. And, and, and like you get the one about the factions. You get the one about special people. You get the one about the city. You get the one about travelling. They're really good, and they're also full of real character and story. And you're like, oh, you know, each book is like a real. It's a fun in. read. It's got great pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tony Dutalizzi, such great artwork. It's amazing. Um, Tony Dutalizzi. There is as <laughs> <laughs> maximum respect for the <laughs> artist. <laughs> as you are, um, as you are out there, you see there is a dwarf um, who is sort of out amongst the trees. Um, he is kind of walking around. He seems to be sort of alternating between playing a small flute and in sort of enjoying the fresh air. And uh, occasionally he kind of stops. I mean, you're out there for a little while. Mm -hmm. He stops and he sits down and he takes a, a, a piece of wood out of his pocket and he seems to be sort of carving something mm -hmm. into it, like a small shape or some kind of, um, you know, little uh, whittling. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and uh, at one point a uh, a frost giant uh, comes over which is quite a spectacle you know pale blue white hair and uh, it's a, a female frost giant comes over and they seem to talk you can hear you can't hear what she's saying but you can hear this kind of cracking of an iceberg from this distance <laughs> and it's like uh, but she seems to give this dwarf great respect um and she kind of nods to him and you see seeing this powerful creature kind of pay respect to this dwarf is quite interesting for you um and um he seems to be there um whittling away sitting under a tree when when this frost giant moves away hmm. he's okay happy birthday john happy birthday while well, he's whittling away the hours <laughs> You can just rest and drink and eat, or it's up to you. You don't have to or do anything. kill everyone. Can I see him anywhere? Because uh, I know that he won't be. You can. You are like looking up mm -hmm. at this point, and you can see the remember the curvature of Sigil, the mm -hmm. city around you. Yep. The glow in the middle. You can see the city across the other side, but there's this kind of weird glow in between, uh, and you can see up on top of the. Um, the main 
Hall of Records building. Mm-hmm. A little... The shaft. Uh, 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 a silhouette, as it were, right, against the glow. Yeah. Um, I look about this big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see um, quite from where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, up there. And Jophiel and Attila went in. Inside. And Heskin's and Heskin now... Around, Heskin's somewhere. probably got in there mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Just making sure I know where everyone is. Mm-hmm. Reacts. Probably indoors where it's warm. Yes, definitely. It's too cold out here for Hryak. And also, the t- the, the the magic that he's been expressing has, t- has taken a strange toll on him. You've seen this kind of warmth and fire lighting inside his hands and sort of from outside of his sleeves. Um, and he seems to be quite drained, quite tired, as if this new mm. emergence of power is really affecting him. Hmm. Yeah, that's something else to think about. Hmm. Someone yeah. else's problem. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Cool. You're chilling? Yep. Okay, right. So, um, I would like to um, inquire for, around the people who are of a similar size to myself. There's a um, lot of them. And yep. su- suggest that I'm struggling a little bit with getting stabbed. This obviously doesn't happen when I'm on a ship because um, people don't tend to wear huge amounts of armour. Um, and I need some armour. Ah! There's a... There's a large uh, human who's... He, you think he's human. He's almost seven foot tall. You know, he's a big chap for humans. And he's like, Ah, oh, yes, you're looking for some chain, are you? Or oh, maybe... I need, a, I need a breastplate. Oh, proper I armour. just need a breastplate. Oh, I need any of the rest of it. He, um, I just need a breastplate. He pulls a throwing axe out of his pocket and yeah. he looks across the room and he goes, Whoa! And he throws it across the room. Yeah. Digs into a pillar by a dwarf who looks up and he goes, uh, uh, and, shout, over, and he can't hear across the, the, the din of the room. And the dwarf like looks up like, what the, what, what the, what? and then he says, that chap over there. Okay. I shall walk Grunder, the breast the water, Grunder over there. The breast to, the, yeah. to the chap. He's like, did you fucking throw this axe at me? Oh, he's a proper dwarf. I'll pull out a gun. Oh, oh, so, I say I'm, I'm unlikely to use an axe. May I? She'll pass him one of my pistols. Oh. He like, <laughs> we know all proper oh. dwarves come from Yorkshire. <laughs> That's the it's, proper it's dwarf. It's the Warhammer fantasy the role play. Warhammer uh, fantasy uh, role yeah. play dwarf. Hey up, lad. Hey up, lad. Took gun. Get in, man. <laughs> Your little elf snipper. Passes it back to you, and he's like, you know, it it's looks proper. Like he's kind of given a little clean or something as he's done it. Oh, are they? Yeah, it's good. Right, well. You look, you'd what, think would be what can I do? Uh, of Lord of the yeah. I, I, I need a breastplate. Why? You're a big, big, big lad, aren't you? I'm a big lad. Get that breastplate stretcher. I shall, <laughs> I, shall, uh, I shall say, my weapons are my pistols and my rapier. I need to maintain my speed. <laughs> I need to make... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I carry on. I'll carry show you on. my weapon. Carry on. But I need... I need... Defence. Defence. I mean, you're wearing just a flouncy shirt, so... <laughs> yeah. I, shall, I shall say, I cannot argue. Aye. Right, you want you want a breastplate? You have a woman's hand. <laughs> you want a breastplate? Aye, well, I can sort... sort <laughs> my breasts too sort get out. tender sometimes. Sort that out. Right. I, shall, uh, I shall tell him of my new employer. You're being I've filmed. I've got you're Amanda, Amanda the wife. Amanda the <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, hi. Oh, oh moving in <laughs> big circles. Oh, Everyone right. is Watch nipples. yourself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too much over-talking. Um, you're Billy Big Balls, are you? <laughs> dealing, <laughs> dealing with Amanda the wise. No, I, I, I struggle not to shoot him. I... I have the same problem. He's a wanker. <laughs> uh, right, well, I tell you what. You're a big lad. I can do your breastplate. Won't turn me very long. Okay. Um, and, uh... Whew. Get up them stairs. When do you get need it? Get up them stairs. Like Tomorrow. Um, what, what do I get for 200 gold? Touch you up. I mean, there's you up. Oh, nout. Nout? Yeah, little little shirt of scale for 200 gold. Uh, you give me 500 and I'll give you a gift size breastplate. Okay. All right, I'll go and work on that then. As well, have you got stuff for trade? Have I got stuff for trade? I've got a cobalt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give me a cobalt for a breastplate. I shall. Uh, I shall see what my bags. Oh. Are 
So as you're kind of going through your bag, you yeah. realise you have two interesting things on you. Okay. You have this die that you've, this six-sided die that yeah, you found, yeah, yeah. and the cloak. Yeah. Everything else you have is. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, don't yeah. really have much else no. apart from your guns. No. <laughs> yeah, and you're not. You're not selling. I'm guns. not. I'm not. Okay. I can't get rid of the cloak. Um. I shall. I shall. Um... Oh, I see. I should. I should potentially shall lay a pistol on the table. Oh, I know. Use a pistol. Can do smart I've got two. Yeah, you do. And you, you know, you can. You just say. Okay. Up. You lay the pistol down. Yeah. I shall say to him. Oh. I shall say to him. I simply will not be able to get five hundred gold before I need the best plate. So. <laughs> before I need the best plate. How about? Give me two hundred gold. And you owe me 400 gold. I'll go with that. And we write it down in the re- Hall of Records. Okay. And if you fuck me over, <laughs> we come and take more than that. Okay. I'll take right? your breasts. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. I shall, I shall, mm-hmm. I shall grab my crown jewels <laughs> and say on my testimony. <laughs> he laughs. Right. Done. Okay. Very well. He pulls out a document that seems to be very well prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's done uh, this and he starts before. writing things. Yeah. What's your name? Attila. Attila the. Attila. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's Attila. Okay. Attila. Uh, okay. Attila the gift. Uh, right. And, uh, da, 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 da. It's like the contract for the Run Hobbit. It's got loads of go. folding out yeah, bits right. and stuff. Gold, like four hundred gold on payment. Yeah. Otherwise, after two weeks, yeah. Well, we'll leave that. We'll leave yeah, the details yeah, yeah, till yeah. a bit later. To be filled we'll in. We'll leave the murder uh, off this yeah. for now. And I'll uh, I'll get back to you on those details. Uh, just sign here. Oh. Very well. Uh, are you staying in lodgings? Uh, I am tonight. All right, well, uh, there'll be uh, a package waiting for you behind the bar in the morning. Why, thank you. Better get, I better get about myself and right. uh, sort it out. I shall, I shall now go in search. And he kind of stands up and heads off good. of a of a flouncy brimmed hat with a <laughs> feather. feather. You're going to cavalier's hat. That. You spend the rest of the evening trying to find that in the Asgardian yeah, 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 tavern yeah. and have no luck. <laughs> 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 is anybody else doing anything? I'm reading my book that I stole. Oh, just loving the Yorkshire and, dwarf. And what is your book called? Um, an unexpected journey there and back again by Bill Bohbeckins. <laughs> Um, a Song of Ice and Fire down. by Grand it Master was, it The Lord of the Four Winds. Was it? About the Lord of the Four Winds. Yeah, it was called I Feel Guilty for Stealing. Natural and unnatural order of things. It down. It's, called it's a piece. book about the Lord of the Four Winds, who mm-hmm. is a mythological figure in the Aracocra mm-hmm. uh, culture. Mm-hmm. And um, it's quite a long, in depth, uh, uh, quite. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, Dull. Erotically illustrated book. Erotically. Yes, it's a very strange book. <laughs> oh, you are you are surprised by some of the adventures of the Lord of the Four Winds. Blimey! However, as it goes on and you get past some of this, you're like this weird Aracocra, <laughs> like you, Kubo <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Hakuma Kasatra. No, uh, uh, <laughs> Aracocra. Uh, you. Uh, <laughs> You, you start to get into the parts where it talks about the, the rod and how it's shattered into seven parts. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. And how these parts were scattered across various planes of existence. Yeah. And the bringing them, of them together, yeah. as foretold in your culture's you know, myths and legends, will uh, imbue that person with all the powers of the elemental plane of air, mm-hmm. whatever that means. And it's some kind of... Um, channeling rod for like a lightning um what's the word lightning rod conductor. lightning rod like, yeah, a conductor kind of thing that's been shattered mm-hmm. um and each part imbues different powers mm-hmm. uh, and some of them talk of the ability to control the wind some of them to control lightning some of them around flight and various other things uh, and each part can imbue uh, the wielder with these different abilities when they're all brought together and reassembled and it doesn't say ha- it's not quite clear on that part of it as you're kind of sort of doing the skimming oh what's going on in chapter 12 mm-hmm. thing um, it's not really said how that would happen because no one's obviously done that but they are broken and it's believed that 
each part is lesser than the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. When it was fully formed and the Lord of the Four Winds had it, he had all manner of powers and abilities. Uh, and people who have held the parts don't have as much, not a seventh of the power, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, uh, and one, there is a, a discussion of uh, one of the parts was believed to have been uh, fell into a conduit, an astral conduit. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the parts was believed to have fallen into a vortex to the quasi, no, para elemental plane of magma. And the, uh, the other five parts, it's unknown. Uh, this seems to be not a finished book. Like someone may actually come back and put more information in. There's a few sheafs and pages at the back that aren't complete. Um, uh, and it does look a bit like printed text. Mm. Question, Brendan Alpha Fool. Are you good there, Jim? Or did you mm -hmm. want to do anything else? Uh... That, I mean, reading that and getting all that information takes you a lot of the evening because you're like going through and... Oh, that's oh god! That's, ooh, right, next page. <laughs> Flips out. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I think I'm. I think I need to somehow get my hands on a um, rapier because having a strength based weapon when my strength is shit is not working very well. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. You can buy a rapier. Yeah. I'll from there's like in the. In the dormitories on the side of the tavern, there are people hawking wares. Yeah, it's warriors yeah. and things. I mean, it's slightly harder to get a rapier, and you may be slightly looked down upon that you've not got a big sword or an axe or club or something. Mm -hmm. But you can buy a rapier. I believe they're 15 gold pieces. All right. So it's 30 for you. No, it's 15 <laughs> gold pieces. Yeah, right. Uh, Heskin just wants to talk to people, get gossip in the planes, and he'll do some entertaining and bardy things. Okay. Do you want to make a performance roll to see if you earn any money for these? Oh, yeah. Let's, oh, hang on. Hang on. Right. This is what I was looking up earlier on. Uh, I'm trying to like use that? more of the resources as, you know, to, to explore them, and the Xanathar's Guide to Everything has yes. some downtime activities. And one of those downtime. is nice. carousing. Yeah. So you can go around and Some start to get drunk and try and uh, make friends with people. Um, you can... Where are we? Pit fight. You can relax. Uh, you can go relax. and do some crime. You can gamble. You can uh, research. <laughs> you can uh, sell a magic item. Put on that crime page. <laughs> I... I I have. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> yeah. It's a bookmark um, with a picture of you. <laughs> I'm going to get 400 gold or I'm going to get crunched. I should go gambling. So, um, I don't think there's necessarily one here for performing. I think we can just make a perform roll to see how well you perform. Um, I'd say if you hit five, yeah. you're going to earn a D6 silver pieces. If you hit 10, you're going to earn 2D6. 15, 3D6. 20, 4d6, 25, 5d6 silver pieces. Okay. Just as, because people aren't chucking lots of money around, but you might, you know, you might get some. Yeah. Uh, oh, when, do, when do I choose to use my inspiration? <laughs> Before I tell you whether you've succeeded. But this kind of breaks that, so you can add it whenever you want. Okay. So if you're like close to one, go. you can go for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, That's good. That worked. Yep. So, 17. Yes. So you get 3d6 Ooh. silver pieces. So roll 3d6. 3-0-D-O-6-0. Oh, Whoa! Nice. Uh, 14. Okay. So you've earned a little bit of cash. You know, you're not going to get 500 gold pieces on a night of playing in a tavern, but yeah. that's that's pretty good. And you're sort of moving about, playing your flute, um, trying to get the cues from the people who are throwing axes and punching each other in the corner or playing this kind of uh, Nordic version of chess with very stylized large pieces, you know, over in the corner. Um, you see Attila at one point bargaining with a dwarf who has an axe buried in the <laughs> pillar next to him and some of his hair may be stuck to the pillar um, and uh, you can see all this going on as you're dancing around and sort of 
jumping from table to table and playing. People are throwing money at you and you're kind of dexterously catching it as it goes and yeah. carry, still carrying playing the flute and that kind of thing. I play that, but with silver coins. Yes. <laughs> so you start to um, have a bit of... These people start to, you know, say, oh, who are you? And you, you know, you tell, you know, and all that kind of thing. Exactly. So people start to potentially know who you are. So we're going to have a d20 roll. Um, they mug you in your sleep. Uh, no. We're going to have a uh, d20 roll to see if you make any contacts within the fated. Okay. Two. No. no. <laughs> oh no, with your performance modifier. That little funny guy. I mean, that's my crew, so plus a four. With, uh, your prof- your proficiency bonus and your charisma modifier. Okay, so I use that to six. Okay, so uh, you are moving about and... Find a friendly dog. <laughs> no, you oh, find okay. there is a dwarf oh. who uh, has come in from outside. Maybe you don't know that. Uh, and he, um, you're playing your flute and dancing around, and uh, he's kind of sitting there drinking and sort of looking. He seems to be looking around and really sort of studying people and sort of looking over, and he's like, oh, "Hmm, yeah, yeah." Seems to be like happy that people are having fun. And then you kind of come over, and he's like, "Ah, lad, <laughs> cobbled, dwarf, cobbled, aye." Well done. <laughs> I am Aram Orkwright. Uh And you are? Heskin Longsnout. Scale singer. Well, oh. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. <laughs> well met. That's uh, that's some fine music you're playing there for, you know, one not used to our ways, I can see. Especially as you said you were playing the flute. <laughs> <laughs> He's got both. He's like a one-man band. He's got, got like cymbals and... <laughs> Between your knees. Uh, yeah, I'm not too familiar here yet, but I'm trying to learn more. All right. Well, you know, this is a place to know things. We've got the Hall of Records full of all kinds of information. Um, you know, and there's the, the training uh, training tent, you know, uh, the academy. Uh, and the census records. You want to know who's in the city at any one time? Over there, and uh, the property records. So, if you want to know who owns a building or who's renting it or leasing it, then you can find that out there as well. Uh, I I'm chief steward here. Uh, I kind of look after everyone, make sure they're having fun. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't recognise you. You're not one of our faction. Uh, no, I'm newly arrived. But uh, oh, I you're was a prime with yes. I thought you had that air about you. No offence. None taken. Hi. I was talking to... Ramanda the Wise. Ramanda the Wise earlier. Oh, Uh, (laughs) aye. A character. We put up with him. He's a useful man to have around, but he's not... A nice person to have a conversation with. You need comedic relief in my next saga. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear <laughs> You come and play that here, and everybody will throw a coin at you. But uh, he did mention to me about perhaps joining your faction. Oh, I? Yeah. You're up for joining the Fated. Yeah, we're all about, you know, seizing your opportunity, going after what you want, making it your own, and forging your way in the world. It's a great way to think about life, you know, and it's a great way to get things and garner power in the city. We're, uh, we're, we're an important faction, just to let you know as well. You know, among, we're probably in the top three factions in the city right now. And uh, there are some, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen there's been a bit of a diaspora into the city. There's a lot more primes arriving I have heard yes a lot of them are joining the fated because they like what we're selling um, and uh, you know to be fair we're we're, uh, we're bolstering our numbers um, and so are the harmonium we've noticed those indeps as well they've been getting a few more it's uh, it's becoming a numbers game I think but I don't know the duke the duke would know better 
Yeah. And he seems to then carry on and sort of, as someone interrupts and he goes off and goes, oh, watch what you're doing. Don't actually kill that guy. Yeah. We're not on his guard now, you know, kind of thing. And he, he goes off. Jim? Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. Got carried away. <laughs> I thought we are in Thor's Hall of Pleasure. Anyway. <laughs> it's that bit in Rick and Morty with the uh, immortality field. Somewhere <laughs> yeah, yeah. at the top of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, going, huh? Thor's pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> what was in the little bag that I stole? The head of your enemy. The other bag you stole. Yeah. In the other bag you stole... 400 silver! Yeah, there were a million... Go- no. 22 tarantulas! There were 11 gold pieces. And a small uh, ring, which looks... Plain and dull and boring. Just <laughs> since crying, does my beloved husband never lose this ring? <laughs> <laughs> it looks I'm just like, like a. It has no inscription. Busted. It looks like a, a tin band. Nothing, nothing fancy. Would it fit a gristle? A gristle? No way. No way. <laughs> Your fingers are like. Could be an earring. And, and if I hawked a short sword and four daggers, what would I get? For that ten gold. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Cool. Like that. <laughs> you really want this breastplate, don't you? Oh, really it's, got, it's coming, the breastplate's coming. You've really, still got to pay back the debt. Got to pay the debt. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, so I'm going to assume everyone has a rest. Yes. 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 Jeffy, did you want to do anything? Sorry. No, no, I'm I'm not mixing with people. What? <laughs> there? Okay. I'll just make sure what's his face is all right. Was there mm-hmm. anyone else? Wasn't there someone else in the room that we were in earlier when we got here? As well as Grendon, or was there not? No. no. It was just the people outside. There yeah. were people outside. Right. Yep. But they seem to have stolen something, and none of you five mm. have anything on them. Mm. Who stole what? The f- there's five of you here. They were chasing someone who stole something. Mm. You think Hryak yeah. may have something on his person. That maybe what they, they stole. were stole, what they, they were stealing. They stole. As you're now f- away from uh, Ramanda, your uh, your kind of had some time to think about it. Yes, I didn't see him steal anything. So, I'm so also. So do we do we hold React by his by his leg? You're busy upside down <laughs> <laughs> until something falls out. I I'm would very, imagine there busy. would be fire falling out, so yeah. I'd be careful. <laughs> I'm also curious as to how they got in, because the guards seem fairly surprised to find them here, let alone mm. anywhere. We broke in fairly easily, though. Yeah, we were kind of invited in that Alpha had a door and let us in. Well, maybe they had a door. Yeah, but where did they Grindon go? Alpha 4 informs you that all of the Alphas had an emergency exit. So maybe they stole it from one of Alphas 1, 2, 3. Mm. How many Alf- Grind and Alphas are there? 1 to 4. What? Is it just 1 to 12? 12. Oh, 1 to 12. Yeah. We're in squads of 4 until now. Investigating. He says to you at some point. <laughs> no, he says to you at some point on your journey. You know. So Grind and Alpha 4 tells you that they all had an emergency exit. Mm. Okay. Um, given that we're kind of supposed to be here at the moment, mm-hmm. but not necessarily where we were earlier, I might just kind of explore a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, a bit of a wander around. Yeah, maybe go back where we were, see if everything's been cleared up and just kind of mooch. Well, you now can't actually get back into that basement okay, that's area fine. because that's actually, as when you go back, mm. it's good that you do. You find this is actually a super high security yeah. area. And you are doubly curious about how they got in there. Mm-hmm. They must have portaled in somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and there are lots of guards around, competent looking guards, uh, and a couple of people who look like they're probably wizards or priests of some form who mm-hmm. can dish out some tasty magic. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like, okay, they They've must be. Got it covered. Yeah, and they must have it covered now. You're not sure. Um, I see if I can find some other akarakaras and. (laughs) 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 You do actually see in the distance another arakokra flying between sort of buildings in the distance. It's quite a way away. Yeah. 
So you could go after them if you wanted, but... It's so weird to chase up to a stranger (laughs) to show them an erotic book. (laughs) Look, the book's not erotic. It has a few erotic illustrations. Let's, Let's get it clear. Kind of no. But realistically, no. the first page that he would show them. Yeah, he'd be like, look at this! <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I'm three years old. <laughs> yeah. you know, I've just come into maturity. What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> <laughs> now that's Skeksis again. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, just kind of have a bit more of a kind of explore okay. around the place. Is there, you know, most of the people here actually seem to be good hearted, good natured people who are up for competition. Mm-hmm for uh and this kind of speaks to you a little bit because you are you know your nature is chaotic your alignment is chaotic good Mm -hmm. uh, and you are kind of like a certain amount of freedom but capability is important to me looking after myself is important to me survival all that kind of stuff so the fated faction although they've annoyed joe fell actually does speak to you a little bit Mm -hmm. and his guard is close to the beastlands Mm -hmm. and there's very you know, it's very um, yeah. So now, now that we've and got and an out of stuff. the you know sudden peril and the a bit of recuperation, yeah, she's she's gonna have yeah. a, just general kind. And of it's nice here. There's some trees peril. and some grass and stuff. It's not all razor vine. You know, the factions often have within their little walled areas something that reminds them of where they come from. Mm. You know, or where they're linked to. And here it's like the slightly orchard feeling, or like an untamed orchard feeling mm-hmm. with these trees. And there's fruit hanging from them. They look like kind of golden pears. Not, not like gold, but yeah. like yellow pears yeah, yeah. kind of things. Um, and it's just a nice arboreal mm-hmm. feeling here. And you're kind of wandering around, enjoying that natural feeling. It speaks to you a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, you're kind of enjoying yourself. There's, um, there's an element of caution. Because on the one hand, it feels fairly safe. Mm. But on the other hand, so did the red lion. Sure. Yeah. So, not kind of, especially why I want to know where he is. Yep. Um. So see what's going on. I'm less worried about her. Mm-hmm. And these guys. Yeah. Um. But also that I know that he's likely to have an eye on things because mm-hmm. he tends to be up there somewhere. Yep. As you're think, as you're like, this is going over in your head, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, suddenly I'm under the trees and I can't see where he is and that kind of thing. You turn a corner mm-hmm. and. Um, beside a tree is a fur bulk, mm-hmm. uh sitting. Let me get in my. Uh, here we go. The right book from your library. The right book from my library, just so I have the. Which right book is this? Powers and abilities and things. This is Volo's Guide to Monsters. I believe that's the right one. Uh, oh, the yes. one that came out. Um, the modern ca- oh no the new one coming out is Baldur's Gate f- um, Descent to uh-huh. Avernus which is actually Planescape adjacent um, it's basically what you've done you've come from Forgotten Realms and fallen into the plains so uh, you know we're ahead of the joke <laughs> I wouldn't say that but current before it was cool current yeah yeah man <laughs> we, we fell the plains before it was cool hipster cobalt okay so uh, <laughs> this uh, creature is clearly tall but sitting on the ground mm-hmm. in a almost meditative pose but eyes fully open and looking directly at you as you kind of come around the corner mm-hmm. um, on the floor in front of him is a, a large uh, bow like a long bow mm-hmm. and it's very well carved from some sort of pale amber wood um uh, and uh, it's strung, and he seems to be um, holding some arrows in his hand. And he's kind of looking over them and sort of checking the fletching and the shaft of them. And he's making sure clearly that all of his he's got a quiver to the side. Mm-hmm. He seems to be just he's checking his kit, checking his gear. Mm-hmm. And he kind of looks up to you and says, "Hello." Get a soft, soft bow and a nod. How, how are you doing today? better than I was this morning. And yourself? I have need to check my gear. I had a troubling day myself, and these things need to be done. Hmm. Nothing too serious, I hope. A small incursion, nothing more. A few devils sent back from whence they came. 
but occasionally some sneak through. Fine looking, fine looking weapon. Oh. Thank you, it took me a while to carve it, to bend it and temper it and string it. There's uh, my companion. What brings you here? Portals. <laughs> she said it with a shrug. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> what are These the strange ruptures in the very fabric of the multiverse are curious, are they not? They are natural but unnatural corridors and doorways. I, I find them perplexing. You have much experience of them? I walk between the planes. I explore them where I can. I seek knowledge more than anything else, such as fame or fortune or power or anything. And this somehow jumbles me in with this lot, he says. For I am my search for knowledge is intense, consumes me. And I must follow it. Knowledge of a particular flavour? Just knowledge of the ways between worlds. Hmm. Well, I presume I may be able to experience some more of that shortly. Perhaps I will let you know. If you are interested. He points to one side. I found out, and you can understand how I may have found this out. If you hold two arrows in your left hand, when you walk between those trees, you will head to Isgard. Oh. A small tip from one traveller to another. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And he kind of goes back to like checking his equipment as if, you know, pleasantly mm-hmm. in a polite fashion, yeah. but just like, I'm not uh, talking to you anymore. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I will leave him in peace. So you're going to rob him. Okay. Why would I do that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the paladin. Okay. You call yourself a That was John Ocey. <laughs> so, uh, right, you guys are. Resting. Yeah? Yep. So we're going to have some resting. Mm-hmm. What happens when you rest? Get everything back. Long rest. Long rest. Ooh. So it's still, it's effectively like just before lunchtime. Okay. If you think about it, because you were crack as far as you woke up to like fighting going on. Uh-huh. You probably had a couple of hours max. You know, and time is a bit weird between planes. And the adrenaline would have drained us to dry. Absolutely. So you are knackered. And when you arise, it's evening. So the glow in the sky is diminishing. It's not quite anti-peak, midnight, but it is darkening. I just realised evening tide mm-hmm. is actually like a reference to the tide going out Let's in the see. evening. Yeah. Never realised that, computer, <laughs> computer people. <laughs> Today All I people learned. It's literally just computer 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 people. I was like, <laughs> Alphas tide. 1 through 12. <laughs> <laughs> Today I learned. So... Ah, yeah, oh, blew my mind. Woo. Now, does everyone know how short rests work? You get half because your because I'm going to say something. Hit dice. Hefty. When you when you long rest, you get back half of your hit dice, mm-hmm. up to half of your hit dice. Now, when you short rest, you can spend hit dice to regain hit points. Ah, uh. you literally roll some hit dice to get hit points back. I need my magic. So you wouldn't have done that. This is not a short rest. It's but in a long, long rest, rest, you get all your hit points back. You get half your hit dice back. You get all your spells, powers, and abilities back. So you're full, 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 full. How many hit dice do you have? Is it how lo- what level you Your level, yeah. yeah. And the, the type of dice is dictated by your yep. class. So you've got D8s. Yeah. Or I'm D10. Yes. So when you do a short rest, if you, which is an hour, you can say, I'm going to spend some hit dice to get hit points back. Just to let you guys know. Mm-hmm. Your when you... friendly group bard can also play the music <laughs> and you can get a few more hit points in a short rest. There you go. Cool. So, Echo, where did you sleep? Mm, probably outside. Okay. Given that it's midday-ish and everyone's loud. Yeah. I assume they have rooms and stuff. 
Well, you're in the dormitory, yeah. so you've been given room and board, but... I know that Echo and um, Quaff especially like to be outdoors. Nature. So Quaff, I assume you've slept perched somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So the two of you arise, you know, awaken during the day um, as evening revelry. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like a Great. there's like a base louder. level of revelry, <laughs> and it kind of kicks up a notch as more people seem to be arriving in the faction headquarters. Are coming back from whatever they've been doing during the day. And lights are being lit, torches, crystals, magic, whatever, around the the headquarters. And these people who are as guardian, a lot of them in nature, and therefore prone to revelry, mm. really start to kick in. So there are drink. There's massive drinking, fighting, in a in a kind of competitive, positive way. Mm. Um, you see some contents. people going through between those trees every now and then and occasionally only one of them come back (laughs) um uh and quite a few wake up and you've got a very good view of kind of the grounds around you this kind of spread around and the streets heading out and around and there is mass revelry going on they Mm -hmm. seem to be having some kind of party or mustering you're not sure which it is It's, Mm -hmm. it's somewhere in between uh, and the rest of you are in your rooms, um, and you're kind of slightly out of sorts because you're sleeping during the day and you're a bit out of kilter. But as far as all stats and exhaustion and everything's concerned, you're back to normal, um, and you are ready to go. Um, get all your kit and equipment together, uh, and Grendan Alpha Four arrives, and he says, um, "Ramanda has um, given me required information." For our task, the fortune's wheel is in the lady's ward, and we must head there to meet with the contact. I have been told that modrons are not are more conspicuous than biologicals, and therefore Ramanda has suggested that one of you do the talking. Okay. Can you lead us there at least? Of course. Excellent. Looks at you like slightly confused. Yes. Um. So, you guys head off. <coughs> excuse me to the Fortune's Wheel, which is a tavern in the Ladies' Ward. I'm re- I will try and purchase myself a, a floppy. Your hat. breastplate is ready. Okay. A floppy hat with a feather. And a new okay. breastplate. So you are at the. Oh, I didn't. I took the map away. So you're in the Hall of Records and you head towards the Fortune's Wheel. On the way, you can purchase yourself a floppy hat for the sum of eight silver pieces. Okay, I have some of them. Uh, unless you want a particularly resplendent feather, which will cost you ten silver pieces. I will go with the resplendent. Oh, sounds lovely. Yeah. Right. So, so is that multicolored feather? Is that eight? No, 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 ten. <laughs> yeah. ten. Okay. Fancy pantaloon. As, as, I, as I, yeah. as I, uh, as I put the hat on, I will. Oh, <laughs> ah, oh. I don't think anyone else will notice. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the trader goes, "Ah, oh, Monsieur, yeah, yeah, yeah. you look beautiful with this hat upon your head. You look some ten sort of stone ra- yet ra- lighter. <laughs> yeah, rakish uh, yeah. vagabond with a suggestive eyebrow." The camera adds ten pounds. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so the Fortune's Wheel is a very you guys know about this. It's a very well known tavern in the Ladies' Ward. It's where the high and mighty come to engage with the low. Yeah, so there's a mixture of people. Um, it makes their lives interesting. It's where the rich and powerful kind of hobnob with. The, the dirty folks. Secret And the 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 place is cut into several Secret chambers. Millionaire. You've got the um, the dragon's bar, which is the fancy area. You have the uh, the dicing cup, the bear baiting room, and Fortune's Wheel itself. So kind of a general tavern. But you've got kind of dragon bar, which is the VIP area. You've got the dicing cup, which is the gambling den. And you've got the bear baiting room, which is exactly what it sounds like. You bait bears. You go and have a fight if you want to. Um, so uh, it is a bit posher than your standard tavern on Faerun. There is an eclectic mixture of people 
outside the tavern when you arrive. It's getting it's evening time. Um, your f- your your fancy hat is actually probably aiding you in this situation. New breastplate, fancy hat, cloak. You look slightly like uh, a naval because you're a gif. Yeah. Maybe someone of a naval yeah. officer persuasion who has a bunch of vagabonds. I'm, I'm hang, definitely hang, hang, looking more duelist. Hanger-ons. Yes, indeed. Dashing. Oh, I, I'm, mm, oh. I'm not sure dashing. That <laughs> might be going a bit yeah. far, but yeah. Um, you know, and you know, that this place is dangerous. Mm-hmm. And the dicing cup, the gambling den, is very dangerous because the rich and famous mix with the lowborn and desperate mm-hmm. and things can get messy sometimes so it's not to be uh, underestimated how uh, dangerous it can be i wonder what a paladin would think of such activities this to you is a den of scum and villainy indeed a wretched hive yes um i like you (laughs) (laughs) but everyone who um is is been in sigil before so you probably even um, heard about this Heads up on that. Okay. Because he um, has not been here before. Very true. That there is an albino musician called Estrella, who is well is well known in the city. She is a fated, um, and uh, she is an albino with silver, lustrous hair from Isgard, um, mm. which ties into where you've been and where you're going. And there's as you're getting there, you're suddenly thinking. The fate had seemed well connected in this area, but the fortune's wheel is near the headquarters of other factions. Maybe this is a place where not only are there gamblers and fighters and scum and villainy, but there are spies and factions working against each other and possibly some sort of den of political intrigue. This is what the three of you, Quaff, Jophiel and Echo, are starting to think as you arrive. Mm-hmm. Heskin, you come to a glorious tavern. There are a plethora of folk of all kinds. You see demons, devils, angels, orcs, barrior, centaur, all kinds of people. There's a couple of kobold there. Yeah, they look at you like... Ugh. <laughs> There's a gnome. They call him a gnome. Yeah. Uh, but you, this place is like uh, a massive establishment with many chambers. You can hear music coming from inside and you think, so many stories. <laughs> yes. And also, maybe I can earn some cash. Um, <laughs> so, uh, are you wearing your cloak? Oh, I say I'm wearing my cloak. Yeah. I, I, as I enter. You're going to use a free action? Oh, I'm so using uh, it. No, is it a free action or a... It's a, basically, it's, it's, a, uh-huh. it's a, like a bonus, bonus action. action. Yeah. yeah. So you get a bonus action, so, so you can do it. Attila wears, is wearing a cape of billowing, <laughs> and for a bonus action, he can make it billow heroically. <laughs> I shall make That's it, the only magical power of his cape. I shall make it billow heroically, yeah. so they see my rapier, my shiny breastplate. Absolutely. Then I produce my, my rapier. And okay. my hat with my... I mean, okay. if, if, if I felt the need for pantaloons, this would be a yeah, pantaloon. But I'm a gift, so that's a no-no. Okay. And I, as... I, I look at you in a fancy feather and say, if you'd wanted a feather. <laughs> <laughs> say, hey, I'm a dude, I'm a dude. But you suddenly realise that you yourselves are an eclectic bunch, you know, the gif, the kobold, the tabaxi, ASMR. With... Now you've got, you can feel this kind of strange drawing in your shoulder blades. You've got my wings. Back. Aracocra and your boring half-elf friend. Uh, <laughs> but he's an Athasian. So, you know, he's got his own weird thing. He's got his own stuff going on. He's got his crazy eyes. With your Modron companion, you approach. Who is the freakiest one? And as you approach, a large suit of armour steps up. (laughs) Nice. Almost like a construct. Almost. And a, a strange echoing voice comes out from inside. And I probably can't do it justice because I'm not a mechanical creature. (laughs) <laughs> but you can hey, give it a... you... Oh, you should try on. Cause no trouble, and I won't have to kill you. Okay. It on? says, looking at you, yeah, it sounds it's like okay. a big... Yeah, it sounds like a strangely Austrian accent. <laughs> Cause no trouble. Cause no trouble, I, I won't have, have to, to kill, kill you. you. Ow! 
<laughs> Get out! <laughs> no, not yet. Put the coal later. down. <laughs> later, later. Oh, but yeah. it's a uh, large. It's like a, a, a almost like an iron golem, but not not fifteen foot tall. It's kind of like an eight foot tall construct. You can see that its right hand is actually a large mace ball, but its left hand is a like a gauntlet of fist to to do you know. I need your heart. Your and it reaches out. Your cloak of billowing. <laughs> yeah, give me your heart, your cape, and your breastplate. Uh, and it says, <laughs> one gold piece entry fee each. Now. <laughs> and I go, Grendon. <laughs> and a little tray slides out and it goes <laughs> into its hand. Nice. And it goes, is he going to stamp our hands? So we can... No, it steps, steps to the <laughs> side. Yeah, wristband. Steps to the side. And uh, and there is the, the doorway into this large double door, fine oak with inlaid metal banding. You know, the hinges are well supported. It looks like this is almost like the, the front door to some kind of castle. You know, this the scale of this door. And it slowly opens up. And inside there is revelry and all kinds of things going on. There's people playing cards and dice. You can see sort of through a, uh, a doorway over there. There's some people on a stage playing a little... <laughs> uh, uh, there is uh, this um, uh, what's the word? albino musician, uh, half-elven woman, on a stage uh, playing um, a harp. Oh. Um, you can see to the side as well, there is almost like a mini alpine horn. You know, they're fucking huge but like a smaller one that maybe is for later on or something next to her but she's playing a harp uh, and this music is playing and there are people performers dancing around there's, there's servers moving around passing drinks and things um, you can see dragonborn you can see orcs you can see dwarves you can see a tanari in the corner playing cards with a diva an angel uh, you can see a whole plethora of people moving around inside this place. It seems like the whole mixture of Sigil has come to this place. You can see people who are clearly faction um, big big wigs. Yeah. Next to scummy people talking and things passing between hands, dodgy goings on, brown envelopes, paper bags, that kind of thing. All going on in here. Uh, and as you come in, a uh, small halfling comes out and it's like, Greetings! Greetings to the fortune's will. All of your pleasures may be sated here. All games of chance are available. If one wishes to perform in a bout of combat skill, then you may be furnished with such a thing. And if you don't, and you wish to merely drink, relax, and enjoy oneself, then please come in. Join us here at the fortune's wheel. Well, I would very much like to speak to Shmeshka. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Just bam out. Uh, and we'll leave it there. <laughs> cool. Jim. <laughs> okay. Ended the session again. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> Stop yeah. saying Stop things. Close to your <laughs> cut off. So it's probably, okay. probably be best. Excellent. Cool. 8.7k. Okay. 8.7k. Oh, so you were rich beyond your wildest dreams. Cool. Say okay, so thank you guys. A bit more of a story one, less oh, fighting cool. that one. Get plot we happening. Found stuff. Yes. We slept. I have. The I had fun with Ramanda there. That was quite fun. I, I was looking cloak. forward to playing him. You do have the coolest cloak. Yeah. The coolest yeah. cloak. Yeah. Yeah. I'm now. I'm now a jurist. Well. You know, bonus action below. Below, yeah, yeah. Not, not a reaction, not always below. stealth, not, <laughs> not sneak attack. No, first bonus action yeah, every but, round. Yeah, but be. deception with a bonus action of below. I mean, Jesus Christ, Whoa. that's going to that, be awesome. That's some some, some yeah. serious. I've literally Do you just have robbed, deception as well? robbed the, the guns out of your out of your. You know, <laughs> well, you we'll didn't see. Even see me because <laughs> you're too billowing my cloak. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so that was episode five of The Dark of the Cage. Thank you very much for joining us. A lot of fun there. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Please don't forget to check out all our social media links below. Join us on our Discord. We are like five people away from having 100 people on the Discord, which is pretty okay. cool. That's pretty good. Uh, join us on our Facebook tabletop gaming community 
uh, group as well. We have over 200 people on there talking about lots of things and looking at pictures of Sam's miniatures that she's painted. <laughs> uh, and Leon's thanks. miniatures that he's painted because your Seraphon are on there as well. Nice. Yes. I'll send you my pictures of my models and you can put them on there. Yes. Yeah. All the um, yeah. Also, please go and check out our Patreon. If you're watching the shows and enjoying them, please consider supporting the channel. Everyone who helps us makes it a bit better for everybody else, from all the kit and equipment that we have, to the games, the aids. The, I mean, these cards that our patrons are paid for are just fantastic. Oh really useful for players and GMs That's alike. That's card. Oh, I was, thought we were just holding up cool things. On the Patreon also, <laughs> no. we currently have a free RPG, which is a little game I've made called Grimdark. Grimdark. Uh, and I've just released a, a, a dungeon, a free dungeon map to everyone, but that's going to be soon for patrons. Will be statted up for Grimdark, so it'll be the, there'll be the first adventure where you get to take on the sack folk of Grindelspire in the dungeon beneath their village, uh, and the Did necromancer I see it overlord. Has a print scale. You can just print the whole thing out. Well, and... I it's six hundred DPI, so I've actually blown it up to. Yeah. If you put it in PowerPoint on an A3. And you posterize it on nine pages. It's miniature scale. Yeah. So do that. You'll have, you'll have to send it to me, and I'll try and print some on canvas. I've, I've got it in the house. I just didn't bring it in here because yeah. it's fucking huge. Uh, uh, that would be cool. <laughs> yes, one. definitely. Like a roll out. We'll I, reckon, I reckon. And I think we're gonna. I think we. Yeah, Antilles can handle it. I think we're gonna need to do what? a grim dark. It's the name of the, the, name of the table. It's a wedge. You, you've never said. We've table. said that before. I'm going. Okay. And goodbye to you, viewers. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gone yet. Oh. Oh, oh no, Then yeah. return yeah, with us to the land of imagination. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Here we will describe the epic quest that we go upon. Why aren't you running the game again? I don't know. <laughs> so, so soon <laughs> so we're going to be doing some one shots on the channel. One opportunity. And John's going to run a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness one. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I might do. And then people can play in it. Teenage Mutant uh, Ninja Turtles. Uh, also, I'm thinking of running a Grimdark one shot to try yeah. actually play test it. And Grimdark. Show it on the channel. But I also want to do stuff like Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. Wait, what's that one called? It's Conan. Astonishing Sorcerers and Swordsmen of Hyperborea. I've already got that wrong. It's called Ash. It's Conan style. Conan. Dun, dun, dun. Best Left Buried by our friend on Discord, Soul Muppet. You go and check him out on Twitter as well. Uh, we're going we're gonna to probably play that game at some point. And there's loads of other stuff. Then uh, future campaigns will be Star Wars and there's other things we're going to do. So go, you know, go and check out the Facebook group. We're going to share a load of that stuff. We want people to vote on things and help us figure out what we're going to play next. But we're having a lot of fun with D&D. So this is going to go on. I'm on a holiday for the next two weeks. Three well, weeks. There's no one for two weeks. So we're going to miss an episode, but then we'll be back in four weeks' time. Um, and yes, uh, don't forget to go and check out our other shows. We've got on the Edge of the Emperor's Light, which is our Dark Heresy show. We've got Vostok's Chance, which is our Scion show. And we've got Star Trek Morpheus, which, funnily enough, is our Star Trek show. Yay. And I get to play a Cardassian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a Kim Cardassian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keeping up with the Cardassians. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching uh, The Dark of the Cage, and we will see you in four weeks. Bye-bye.